Hello students, this video is on bridge course for first PU trigonometry. You have studied about trigonometry in your 10th standard only. But today we will recall few concepts related to trigonometry but what you have studied in your 10th standard. Okay. So we will begin with the word trigonometry itself. The word trigonometry is a Greek word is the combination of two words one is trigon another one is metron it is a combination of two words trigon and metron the meaning is the measurement of sides and angles of the triangle meaning is it is the measurement of sides and angles of the triangle so the question rises why we need to study trigonometry or what is the use of trigonometry so, in olden days trigonometry was developed just to solve the problems related to triangles. So, it was used by sea captains while navigation or by the surveyor to map out the new land. But nowadays trigonometry has a wide range of application. It is used in science of seismology, it is used in navigation, it is used in marine zoology many more. You can use trigonometry to measure the height of a tree or height of the building without measuring the actual height. So, you can calculate the height of the building or height of the tree without measuring the actual height using trigonometry. Okay. So, today we will learn few basics related to trigonometry. So, we will consider fundamentals of trigonometry. For that, we need a knowledge about an angle. So, what is an angle? Angle is a measure of rotation of a given ray about its initial point. Angle is a measure of rotation of given ray about its initial point. So, I hope uh, you know about ray. So, consider a ray like this. Suppose this is an this is a ray. So, this is called the initial point. So, if we consider one more ray starting from the same initial point, consider one more ray with the same initial point, then so consider a ray with the same initial point like this. If you start moving from this like this, suppose this is the terminal point. So, the angle which you have moved from the initial side to terminal side, this region, this is called an angle. So, angle is a measure of rotation of given ray about its initial point. So, this point is called, suppose if you mark this as A, Suppose if you mark it as A, A is the initial point. Suppose if you mark this as B, the ray AB is the initial side. Ray AB is the initial side. Initial side. The final ray, suppose if you mark that as AC, that is called terminal side. AC is terminal side side. Yes. So, we can conclude like this. Angle is a measure of rotation of a given ray about its initial point. Suppose if we consider a ray like this. Suppose if we consider a ray like this. Suppose this is the initial side. Suppose this is the initial point. If I mark this as A, then consider one more ray. So, I will consider a ray with the same initial point and start moving like this. Suppose this is the terminal side now. Mark this as AB and terminal side as AC. So, we have moved like this in this direction means in the clockwise direction. In the earlier case, we have moved in the anti-clockwise direction. But in the second case, we have moved in the clockwise direction. So, if we move in the anti-clockwise direction, the measured angle is considered to be positive. 
if you move in the clockwise direction like this then angle is considered to be negative so there are two sense of an angle one is positive other one is negative just depending upon the direction of movement of rotation okay see we have considered an angle we know about the definition of the angle the fixed point is called vertex here starting line is called initial ray ending line is called terminal ray in this diagram this is the initial ray see this one is the initial ray so start moving from this ray if you move like this then the angle considered is 90 degree now consider obtuse angle starting from here it is the initial sign move like this will get an angle which is greater than 90 degrees so consider to be the line OS, OB is considered to be the terminal side or terminal ray similarly here suppose this is the initial side if you move like this the angle covered is 180 degree so OB is the terminal ray then consider the positive and negative concept if you move in the anti-clockwise direction like this angle is considered to be positive and if you move in the clockwise direction it is negative now how to measure this angle so measure of an angle the measure of an angle is the amount of rotation from the initial side to the terminal side means a quantity right so measure of an angle is the amount of rotation from the initial side to the terminal side for example if this is the initial side start moving from here till AC so this is the angle covered right so now you have to measure what is the amount of rotation given so that is actually angle but how to measure so there are three systems to measure the angle first one sexagesimal system second one centesimal system third one circular system first one sexagesimal system second one centesimal system third one circular system so consider first one that is sexagesimal system in this system a full angle is divided into 360 equal parts consider a circle like this one full rotation suppose consider the axis consider the axis suppose this is x axis consider y axis suppose this is y axis so imagine that imagine that this is the initial side suppose this is the initial side i'll mark this as oa start moving from oa give a full rotation like this give a full rotation like this so this full rotation this full angle is divided into 360 equal parts 360 equal parts so each part is called a degree each part is called a degree okay so one degree is 1 by 360th part right so degree is denoted like this suppose it is one degree one degree is equal to 1 by 360th of the rotation next this each one degree each one degree is divided into 60 equal parts 60 equal parts each equal part is called a minute each equal part is called a minute so one degree is equal to 60 minute now listen to me this notation a bar one bar in the index place is considered to be minute so one minute one minute is 1 by 60th of this right so if we consider one minute now each one minute is divided into again 60 equal parts they are called second so second is denoted like this two bars in the index place so one minute is equal to 60 second right so one second is 1 by 60th of the minute so one degree is equal to 60 minute 1 minute is equal to 60 second 1 minute is equal to 60 second so if you write like this 1 second it is 1 second so a degree can be converted to minute minute can be converted to second so degree can be converted to minute minute can be converted to second so this is about sexagesimal system consider centesimal system in this centesimal system one right angle means 90 degree is divided into 100 equal parts 
under centesimal system 90 degree means one right angle is divided into 100 equal part divided into 100 equal part each part is called a grade each part is called a grade okay and last one circular system the circular system is also called radian mesh circular system is also called radian measure radian measure okay now we'll recall we have considered sexadecimal system it is british system actually one full angle means the central angle is divided into 360 equal parts each part is called one degree and denoted like this consider one degree this one degree again divided into 60 equal parts each part is called one minute so denoted like this one minute so one degree is equal to 60 minute next continue the same that one minute is divided into 60 equal parts each part is called one second so denoted like this so one minute is equal to 60 seconds so this is about sexagesimal system under centesimal system one right angle is divided into 100 equal parts that means 360 degree is divided into 400 equal parts 400 equal parts so you can convert one grade one grade one grade is equal to 360 by 400 360 by 400 degree 360 by 400 degree so one system can be converted to other okay next consider circular system circular system this is also called radian measure so what is an what is the radian consider a circle centered at o suppose i'll mark the center as o now centered at o and radius r unit radius r units consider an arc a b consider an arc a b of length r unit then angle subtended at the center of the circle is considered to be one radian is considered to be one radian so one radian means it is a angle subtended at the center of the circle by an arc whose length is equal to radius of the circle suppose if we consider radius as one unit then circle becomes unit circle so suppose if we consider a unit circle like this suppose this is a unit circle centered at the origin suppose this is the center i'll mark it as o as as i said it is a unit circle radius will be one unit consider this also one unit consider the arc a b consider the arc a b arc length is also equal to one unit means length of the arc a b is equal to one unit is equal to one unit then angle considered angle considered at the center of the sorry angle angle formed at the center of the circle by the arc a b is considered to be one radian this region is considered to be one radian and remember one radian is denoted like this we used to write one degree like this a small zero at the index place to write one radian we use this notation so one radian is denoted like this denoted like this so the definition says like this angle subtended at the center of the circle by an arc whose length is equal to radius of the circle then that angle is considered to be a radian now angle subtended at the center of the circle of radius r by an arc length l is defined as a theta equal to l by r radians that means consider a circle with radius r consider a circle suppose uh, this is a circle with radius r so consider circle with radius r suppose this is r consider arc a b consider arc a b length length equal to l units now length of the arc is considered to be l unit then there is a relation between r and l and angle formed at the center suppose angle formed is considered to be theta radian say this notation is called theta and it is always used to indicate the angle in radian measure okay so there is a relation between theta l and r so that is actually l equal to r theta but remember theta should be in radians only you can convert if you know two quantities from this 
suppose L is known, R is known, you can calculate theta value. Theta is equal to L by R. Or if you know the value of L and theta, you can calculate R. R is equal to L by theta. Or this is the formula. L is equal to R into theta. So this is the relation between theta, L and R. Okay. Now let's consider few trigonometric ratios. What you have studied in your 10th standard. You have studied about few trigonometric ratios. We'll consider that now. So consider a circle. Suppose this is a circle. Consider axis, x axis and y axis. Suppose this is x axis. Consider one more that is y axis. Suppose this is y axis. Consider an angle now. Consider an angle theta. Consider an angle theta. So suppose if this is the angle theta which is formed at the center of the circle. I'll consider the arc as now a. Okay. Now suppose if you form a right angle triangle over here because the trigonometric ratios what you have studied in the 10th standard they are the trigonometric ratios using right angle triangle okay so consider an acute angle in a right angle triangle like this then you can define six trigonometric ratios you can define six trigonometric ratios so this is the hypotenuse suppose if you mark the center as o ob is the hypotenuse ob is the hypotenuse part and this side suppose this is c the perpendicular bc so take BC length as Y now. Take OC length as X. OC length as X. Then the definition says like this. Consider first trigonometric ratio that is actually sine theta. We have the practice of writing sine theta like this. Usually it is SINE but we will write it as we will write it as SIN of theta. Okay this is. Now define sine theta using the sides of the right angle triangle OCB. Okay. So consider first one that is sine theta SINE that is sine theta but we have the practice of writing this sine theta as SIN of theta. Okay. This is sine theta. According to the definition sine theta is equal to opposite side by hypotenuse. Opposite side by hypotenuse. That is see for this angle theta BC is the opposite side. OC is the adjacent side. Right. So BC is considered to be opposite side, opposite side and OC is considered to be adjacent side. OC is considered to be adjacent side. So the definition of sin theta is opposite side by hypotenuse. So from the diagram it is also equal to opposite side is BC that is considered to be Y now. Consider hypotenuse length suppose it is R then it is Y by R. It is Y by R. Next consider cosine theta. Consider cosine theta. We have the practice of writing this as cos theta. So the definition says like this cos theta is equal to adjacent side divided by hypotenuse. So adjacent side is X now hypotenuse is R. Now consider tangent theta. Consider tangent theta this is written like this tan theta tan theta so this is actually sin theta by cos theta this is actually sin theta by cos theta but sin theta is y by r cos theta is x by r so this is is equal to y by x y by x consider cosecant theta consider cosecant theta we know that this is the reciprocal of sin theta so this is 1 by sin theta we know that sin theta is a. sin theta is opposite by hypotenuse. So cosecant theta is hypotenuse by opposite side that is equal to r by y r by y. Next consider secant theta. Consider secant theta. Secant is a reciprocal of cos. So you can write it as 1 by cos theta. But we know that cos theta is adjacent by hypotenuse that is x by r. So secant theta is now r by x and finally consider cotangent theta consider cotangent theta and we know that this is a reciprocal of tan theta this is a reciprocal of tan theta so cot theta cotangent theta is also written like this it is cot theta cot theta is equal to cos theta by cos theta by sin theta cos theta by sin theta that is equal to adjacent side by opposite side that is x by y cot theta equal to cos theta by sin theta that is equal to x by y so we'll repeat first one sin theta so we have the practice of writing sin of theta that is sin theta okay so consider this one 
So sin theta according to the definition it is opposite by hypotenuse so formula is y by r. Consider cos theta adjacent side by hypotenuse so that is x by r. Now if you divide these two if you divide sin theta and cos theta so that is tangent theta we can write tan theta. Tan theta is sin theta by cos theta that is y by x. Next consider cosecant theta it is the reciprocal of sin theta. So hypotenuse by opposite side that is r by y. Next consider secant theta. It is the reciprocal of cos so 1 by cos theta that is r by x. Next cotangent theta. It is the reciprocal of tan so 1 by tan theta. So that is cos theta by sin theta that is y, x by y. x by y. So these are the trigonometric ratios which are formed using an acute angle in a right angle triangle. Okay. Now now we'll consider few fixed angles like 0 degree, 30 degree, 45 degree, 60 degree, 90 degree and we will find the value of sin 0 degree, sin 30 degree, sin 60 degree or sin 45 degree or sin 90 degree. You have studied all these values in your 10th standard itself right. So consider first one sin 0 degree. See I have formed a table like this 0 degree, 30 degree, 45 degree, 60 degree and 90 degree. Recall the value sin 0 degree. Sin 0 is 0. Sin 30 degree 1 by sin 45 degree 1 by root sin 60 degree root 3 by 2 and sin 90 it is 1. There is proof for these values actually that you have studied already. So I am not considering. I will take the values directly. Now we have to consider cos. Cos 0 degree, cos 30 degree, cos 45 degree, cos 60 degree and cos 90 degree. But if you observe the table see sin 0 degree is 0 that is also equal to cos 90. So sin 0 is connected with the cos 90. Similarly sin 30 degree is connected with the cos 60 degree they are the complement angles means total of the two angles is 90 degree right. So for sin 45 it is 1 by root 2 cos 45 also 1 by root 2 only. So cos 0 is 1 which is equal to sin 90. Cos 30 is root 3 by 2 which is equal to sin 60. Cos 45 is 1 by root and cos 60 that is half which is equal to sin 30 and cos 90 that is 0. Now it is enough if you know these two values sin and cos and we know that to get the tan value you have to divide these two. So tan theta is sin theta by cos theta. So divide these two 0 by 1 0. 1 by 2 divided by root 3 by 2 that is for 30 degree. So tan 30 is 1 by root 3. Tan 45 that is 1 by root 2 by 1 by root 2 get cancelled. So tan 45 is 1. Similarly tan 60 that is root 3 by 2 divided by 1 by 2. 1 by 2 get cancelled. The remaining value is root 3. So tan 60 is root 3. Similarly something by 0 is not defined actually. So some 1 by 0 it is not defined. So tan 90 value is not defined. But we will consider it as a large value infinity. The notation used for that is infinite and we know that cosecant is the reciprocal of sine and secant is the reciprocal of cos and cot is the reciprocal of tan. So if you know the values of sine, cos and tan then you can take the reciprocal of those values we will get cosecant, secant and cot respectively right. So it is enough if you know the value of sine then just reverse the order we will get the value of cos then divide these two we will get the value of tan. So this is a table you have to remember right. After that you have studied three trigonometric identities. You have studied three trigonometric identities. First one see sin square theta plus cos square theta equal to 1. Listen to me sin square theta plus cos square theta is equal to 1. If you want to convert this to sin theta so write it as sin theta is equal to see first you have to shift this. So that becomes sin square theta is equal to 1 minus cos square theta. 1 minus cos square theta. So if you want to get the value of sin theta say take the root of this. So sin theta is root of 1 minus cos square theta. Next consider if you cos theta value. So if you want to get the value of cos theta that is 1 minus sin square theta. Consider second identity connecting secant and tan. So secant square theta minus tan square theta that is 1. Second identity secant square theta minus tan square theta equal to 
1. So, you can connect using this identity that is secant theta is equal to root of 1 plus tan square theta. 1 plus tan square theta. Suppose if you want to get tan theta value. So, tan theta is equal to root of secant square theta, secant square theta minus 1. Now, consider third identity cosecant square theta minus cot square theta equal to 1. So, third identity is cosecant square theta minus cot square theta that is 1. Cosecant square theta minus cot square theta equal to 1. Okay. So, if you want to get cosecant theta, write it as cosecant theta that is equal equal to root of 1 plus cot square theta root of 1 plus cot square theta suppose if you want to get the value of cot theta that is root of cosecant square theta minus 1 root of cosecant square theta minus 1 so today we have studied three more identities what you have studied in the 10th standard itself that is sin square theta plus cos square theta is 1 secant square theta minus tan square theta is 1, cosecant square theta minus cot square theta equal to 1. Thank you for watching this video. We will continue the same in the next video. We will do problems based on these identities. Thank you.